Hi, so I have uh, mostly finished work on uh, my PCB, so, and this is quite simple machine, really, until you add some more complications to it. For example, I want it to be relatively quiet, which is a little bit problematic because this is rotating at high rate and, well, it is... Uh, it is basically a speaker right now, which can be solved, and also I have made it out of wood, which is not ideal. You would, I would recommend to make it with aluminium if you can, but I cannot really work with such large pieces of aluminium. So I'm using these Dremel discs because they are quite large, and so you have some room to spare with your construction. You don't have to miniaturize everything like crazy. And uh, yeah, these are these are relatively nice, and they come with uh, adapter like this. So let me attach this, and which is very nice. And this is quite quick attachment, but the first of all, they flex a bit, and the concentricity is not too great. So I mean, they work quite well in handheld tool. So let me. Let me mount this here. <clears throat> and so, yeah, they work quite nice, right? Let's crank it up a little bit. And this is already quite loud. And wait until I... So it's super loud and I suppose this is because this has some run out, this has some run out and this circle may not be perfectly circular and so these vibrations basically translate within this machine so it basically vibrates like this in your hand which you can feel it and until you mount this to anything it will be fairly, fairly quiet. I mean it's not great but fairly quiet. So, first thing I did was I bought this tool, which is an extension to the Dremel with a wire. This is square hole here, well, kind of square. And this come with bearings and all, they look like this. There is a plastic spacer here, which is not too great, but uh, yeah, the bearings are fitted quite well, but they are pre fucked up from factory. So, what I found out, if I mounted this cutoff wheel into the collet is that the runout on this tool is really excessive, like like really excessive. I mean even if uh, even with this Dremel tool, if I crank uh, RPM a lot you will see this doing like this thing and this shaft bending this way and all sorts of things which are not very nice. So basically what I'm trying to say that uh, this type of tool was unachievable for me until now because now I have a lathe, right? So what I did is I made my own shaft and housing. This is... Uh, there are some incorrect bearings in this one. This overheats like crazy. But this is in... Uh, hex rod which have some threaded holes and this is because so you can mount it to something and this works relatively well. The saw blade is uh, attached with uh, normal metric nut and this is normal thread so always when I do some projects when I use such a lot of screws it never works so <laughs> we'll see about that. Anyway um, Okay, let's look more closely on the shaft. Uh, you can see that there is a threaded portion which is way too long, some relief, and the diameter that accepts the hole or fits quite well into the hole of the cutoff discs. And then there is this ring to support the cutoff disc. Now, the radius here should be as small as possible. I mean, this is probably not very good. I will try to fit a cutoff wheel here, but. It should be cleaned up very well, basically. And then um, bearings 
fit here, there's some relief, another bearing, I mean this is fucked up, but anyway, and then uh, here goes pulley and I have a, oh I don't, but anyway I put a thread here and mount pulley that way. I made a lot of these shafts, I mean, well I was learning how to use a lathe basically, so yeah I fucked up quite a lot. Yeah, here is a thread for pulley. Okay, so before I open this thing, I will show you how quiet or how less loud it is, I guess. Uh, yeah, so let's do that. By the way, I'm still using this to drive the motor because I am more, more interested in general performance right now, so I don't care about the electronics. Okay, so it is pretty loud. If I put my hand here to dampen the vibrations, it is less loud. If I lift this, I guess it's more loud. Yeah. Normally you would like to make this thing out of concrete block, but it is what it is. Anyway, so let's do some cuts, I guess. Okay, so as you can see, there's RC Style Motor. It has a pulley, which I transferred the hole into some uh, PVC plastic, then mounted it on there, and then used the motor itself as a light and basically machined it by hand. What the fuck you want here, cat? This is connected with O ring. This is, I guess, some 20 by 3 millimeter O ring. And. It is connected to the pulley on here, oh, which you can see. Very, very tiny pulley. Now, arguably, concentricity on the pulley and the screw isn't great, but it doesn't cause too much vibrations, really. It's pretty close to the center of the rotation. I'm not sure how long this, uh, well, o-ring will last. I hope it will last. Now, the last thing that I should do before I actually even close this, is to mount some uh, some piece of wood here to prevent this dust building up here and in this portion, basically. And also what I need to do, and I'm not sure how am I going to do it, is to mount some piece of something here. So, to basically cancel out the... Basically I want to cancel out the vibration that this can transfer to the outside world. Now this housing block is mounted on this block of wood and this has a large, two large holes basically to uh, fix alignment if I need and the motor mount is glued with CA glue because I don't care. I've installed some uh, thin pieces of plywood and I'm going to glue this piece onto this board so it can avoid everything here. It should be good enough. Okay, so glue is fuming now. I guess here comes nothing. Anyway, that should be enough. Well, not nearly. I can put this into an oven to bake at like 70 degrees or maybe 100 probably. So this would liquidify a bit more, but you know what? It would probably prevent this resonating anyway, so I will leave it as is. And let's see. Okay, so this now uses Arduino, so I can contain this. I realize that I cannot stick potentiometer through here because I should have drilled like relief here, but well, anyway, I will have to make a front panel now, but it doesn't really matter that much. 
simple really well actually can I I have to bend this leads yeah I can okay so uh, one thing that I have to mention which is important is that you have to uh, program this ESC to not use braking because if it does you will burn your Arduino so I can So, when I was braking, the power LED was getting very bright and I think I have one Arduino board that has some hole in the 32 4 chip. Okay, so everything is held in place with hot nail glue apart from this potentiometer, but that doesn't matter. So, I can finally close this. Wait a second. Have I fucked up? Yes, I have. Wow, well, fuck. Okay, so the time has come and I need to cut this PCB and I run out of single-sided boards as you can see it's used here. I thought I have enough but I have double-sided and this is single-sided board so... And I need to use like, I need to rely on the other side being pretty much isolated so I will have to peel the copper off I guess but... And a few things to note for myself, it's better to start the exposure with precise cut PCB. This is because now I have, now I have some uh, some board layout on this and it is crooked to the edge so I don't have any edge that is precise so I will have to cut it by hand basically and then I can think even of using some guides. So let's cut this by hand first and we'll see then. <coughs> Yep, so I will hold this by hand and we'll cut it. Well, fuck. Okay, so the blade is not completely square to the edge of the machine, so I could not rely on that. If I do square it, then it cuts nicely, so I'm happy with that. But I can already tell that I need some uh, kind of edge to ride against, so I will do it some sometimes when I will have time for that. Also, what I will have to do is cover to cover this blade so I can stack other machines on top of this machine, because otherwise it's... Well, I can stick it like this way, but anyway, yeah, so anyway, uh, that's all for now, I guess, yeah, see ya.